So, well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to share my work with you today. I'm very pleased to be here. So, um, as it was said, I'm, I'm a composer. I'm working with computers. I use computers as partners for creativity. I run the uh, Interdisciplinary Center for Computer Music Research at the University of Plymouth in the UK. Um, we are championing uh, research into quantum computer music. We probably are pioneers in this field. In this talk, I will discuss uh, why quantum computing is important for music, and I will introduce you uh, our, our research. And I will show an example of the kinds of things that we are we are developing. So, um, why quantum computing and music? Um, people hardly ever realize that musicians actually started experimenting with computers um, far before the existence of the uh, vast majority of industrial, scientific, and commercial com computing applications that we have today. For instance, the, in the 1940s, researchers in uh, Australia installed a loudspeaker on their MK1 computer to track the progress of a program using sound. And uh, later on, in 1951, they programmed this machine to play back a tune. That is perhaps the first time ever that, that I co a computer uh, you know, produced uh, music. In this case, it just played back uh, music. It did not compose anything automatically, but in, it was a, a, an excellent start for the 1940s. Since then, uh, companies and universities have been welcoming musicians to join their research laboratories. And um, um, here you can see, for example, uh, an extract of, of the score of a string quartet generated in the 1950s by a piece of software running on one of the first uh, mainframe computers built in the USA. So these um, early pioneers um, unwittingly paved the way for the development of, of a thriving global music economy. Almost every aspect of music today requires computing technology in a way or another. Computers are the musical instruments of today. So emerging quantum computing technology will there is no, uh, no, make no mistake that we will most certainly have a, a huge impact in the way in which we create and distribute music in time to come. And um, we, computer musicians, uh, we have unprecedented opportunities to shape this, this future. So what can com quantum computing bring to music? Um, Foremost, I think quantum computing can bring a new paradigm for creativity. Um, you know, as the digital computer um, brought us new paradigms for creating music, I believe that quantum computing will do the same. And also, algorithm speed up for certain tasks. Um, when proper hardware becomes available, uh, tasks such as database search for music distribution, for example, and uh, music remix on the fly. These are applications in which I believe quantum computing will have a, a, an impact. But most importantly, um, I believe that music can contribute to quantum computing research um, as well. So it's not only a matter of musicians using quantum computers, but perhaps uh, contributing to the advancement of quantum computing. Examples that come to mind are methods to listen to quantum information and algorithms, and of course, um, educational tools. So um, the, the great majority of computer music pioneers uh, in the 1950s and the 60s, they were composers uh, interested in inventing new music and um, inventing innovative approach to, to composition. They focused on developing algorithms to generate music automatically. Essentially, the art of algorithmic music consists of 
harnessing algorithms to produce patterns of data and developing ways to translate these patterns into musical notes or, or synthesized sounds. An early approach to algorithmic music was to program a computer to generate random notes and then uh, reject those that do not satisfy given rules. It is relatively straightforward to encode rules based on theories of musical composition. These are the sorts of things that music students learn at, at music schools. Another um, widely used approach is to use the probabilities to predispose a system towards selecting specific elements from a given set of musical parameters. For instance, Consider the set of eight notes shown in this slide here. Uh, a Gaussian functions, for example, could be used to bias a system to select notes from the middle of the set. In this case, it would generate sequences with higher occurrences of F4 and G4 notes. So um, rules for musical composition can be expressed in, in many different ways including graphs, set algebra, Boolean expressions, transition matrices, and so on. Basically, every method you use to represent problems um, in computers, uh, mathematical problems, physical problems, chemical problems, they can also be used to represent music because music at the end of the day uses a very symbolic um, notation, a very symbolic system for for uh, for people to to use to work with. So here is an example on this slide of, of sequencing rules for establishing which notes are allowed to follow a given note within a set of notes. So each of these rules then uh, represents transition probabilities for the next note to occur in a sequence. For example, here we have you now after C4, for example, each of those five rules uh, we've got there has a 20% a chance of appearing. Um, these rules can be expressed in terms of probability arrays, and these arrays can be arranged in a, in a two-dimensional two matrix, forming a transition matrix. Here you begin to see, um, you know, the... Uh, uh, similarities between you know, matrices being used in music processing and matrices that are ubiquitous in quantum computing. So in this slide here, we can see, uh, for example, given I start a note, the system would then pick the, the note, the next note, based on those transition probabilities and, and so on. A Transition matrix with non-zero entries immediately after, you know, immediately on either side of the main diagonal uh, and zeros everywhere, everywhere else uh, represents a, a random walk process, which are, you know, it, a random walk is very useful for, for, for generative music composition. As an example, uh, let us consider, let's say, a, a robot or something that is programmed to play a keyboard instrument with eight keys to produce the notes in, in, in this set of eight notes. However, a robot in this case would be programmed in such a way that notes can be played up and down the keyboard by stepping only one key at a time. So this is what is represented here in this matrix um, shown in this slide. And, and the random walk processes such as these are normally represented as graphs, which is another um, very useful representation for, for quantum computing processes. So in a random walk algorithm, a walker starts on a certain node of the graph and has an equal probability of traveling through any of the connected edges to reach uh, an adjacent node. Nodes. So this process is then repeated as many times as required, and the nodes uh, can represent tasks to be performed by uh, an algorithmic generative system or information or musical notes or uh, parameters for a synthesizer, 
So it depends on how you set up the system, really. But you know, this kind of um, um, uh, random walk is, is a great method for generating musical sequences with uh, smooth gradual changes, such as the little um, uh, tune I, I notate here on this slide. Now, let's step back a little bit for a minute. And uh, I think now it's a good moment to, to discuss a little bit how quantum computing fits you know, in musical research. So um, a sensible approach uh, to get started with uh, quantum computer music, as I call this field, is to revisit existing tried and tested algorithm music methods. There are a number of methods that have been developed within the last 70 years since the 1940s when this um, when quantum computer music began. And the idea then is to learn by trying to make quantum versions of these algorithms, test them on, on quantum computers. And I believe that sooner or later, new quantum specific methods for, for composing music are bound to emerge from these um, exercises. So um, in, in order to develop research applications for near-term quantum computers, we need adequate tools to develop and experiment new algorithms. So this is one of the things that we are, um, we are developing in, in, my, in my lab. So we are, in order to facilitate musicians access to quantum computing, we are developing a, a piece of software or, or a framework called uh, QTunes which is probably going to be a Python-based programming tool, but we are exploring other, other um, uh, uh, programming um, tools as well, such as C++ and other music-oriented tools, um, which will combine quantum programming with music, um, computer music programming. So we envisage this as a, uh, you know, providing a bridge between quantum computing, quantum computing algorithms and, and generative music ones. So as, a, as an example, let us see how the uh, random walk uh, the random walk method I introduced earlier can be implemented as a, a quantum algorithm. So in classical random walk, the walk inhabits a definite node at n one moment in time. In quantum, in quantum walk, the walker will be in a superposition of all nodes it can possibly visit in a given moment. So metaphorically, we can say that the walker is on all viable musical possibilities uh, simultaneously until it is observed. Here is a, a circuit uh, designed to walk through the edges of a cube to visit um, eight uh, vertices, um, each of which is represented as a tree, as three uh, bit long uh, binary numbers. Um, the circuit is quite simple, but it, it does uh, the, the job in this case. The, it uses uh, five qubits, uh, three to encode the eight vertices of the cube. I call these input qubits, and the other two are to encode the, the possible routes that the walker can take from a given vertex. So I call these the dice qubits. Depending on the values yielded by the dice qubits, the conditional gates will invert the input qubits accordingly, and the results of the measurements are then used to arm the input qubits for the next step of the walk. And, and the cycle continues for a number of steps. So the, uh, the cube here is, a, is an underlying common abstract representation of two simple musical grammars for sequencing pitches and durations of musical notes. So the, the system starts with a given note, for example, a half C4 as outlined here in this slide. So this initial note is given to the system, and then uh, to calculate the, the next note, the system runs the circuit twice, once for input qubits, um, 
you know, um, for for pitches and the other for uh, for for codes for uh, the duration of the notes. Um, I will run a little demo, a very simple demo, just to show you the you know um, how this works. Um, in this demo, I am using the uh, the generated notes. Um, they are, they are used as controllers for a rack of synthesizers in, in the drum machine. And the way it works is that I've got the um, the client, which is my, my laptop here, which I'm using to do this presentation. I connect it with uh, um, to a server, um, uh, a quantum hardware. Um, today, I'm connecting to a simulator um, to avoid uh, the, uh, uh, further delays in the waiting queue. And then um, once the uh, you know I get the measurements back, I convert this into the uh, the commands for the uh, for the synthesizer uh, for the in the drum machine, and the cycle continues um, until um, I tell it to stop. Um, I'll just um, jump here to my uh, Jupyter notebook thing. Um, I'm not going to go through the code. Um, you know, it's uh, there's no point really. Um, what's important to say is that I'm using the um, um, at the moment I'm using the uh, uh, the Rigetti machine um, based in Berkeley, um, and I've got also the uh, simulator loaded into my computer, um, which is the thing that I'm going to use right now. Um, so let's see. Um, I will run this. Let's uh, see if it works all right. So. Um, it is processing the um, the codes for pitches at the moment, and then the next um, the next minute it will um, process the durations for those pitches, and then I will channel this. I'll pipe all these results, these measurements, onto my musical system. While it is doing this. Um, I will um, um, just you know, mention some concluding um, remarks. Um, when when the music starts, uh, I, I will stop talking. Um, on on real quantum hardware, um, quantum walk uh, is argu arguably faster than classical. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the nice thing about this is that every time I run this program, it will sound a little bit different, um, because of course it will depend on on the on the on the walk that it does through the nodes of the cube. Um, now you add more nodes. Um, if you add more, um, you know, more elements to this um, to this graph, you can get quite complicated musical outputs, um, which I've done, but um, I'm not going to run here because it takes considerably longer. So that is the point I was going to make. I mean, um, in simulation, um, this kind of quantum walk um, is not really, um, there is no advantage of using you know, uh, uh, quantum simulation or digital classical computing. But um, once the, uh, real quantum hardware begins to to become more available and more reliable, um, we'll be able to process quite complex uh, random walks um, 
for multiple musical parameters in parallel. Um, this kind of algorithm is quite it's quite interesting for computer music because in addition to to its generative uses, as I, I demonstrated here, quantum walks are you know, can be a, is applicable as a search algorithm for search music in large databases, for example, and also in ma in machine learning of music. At this stage, um, I I don't think you know um, anybody can advocate that. Uh, any quantum advantage for musical applications. Uh, on the contrary, uh, um, digital computers today do things much, much faster than um, quantum computers do for, for music uh, processing. But um, things will change. And, and I think um, you know, in a few years time, we will begin to see uh, more robust hardware and, um, uh, and systems will begin to be um, more efficient. Um, so what I am advocating here is that the music technology community should be quantum ready for when this, uh, these um, facilities emerge. And in the process of learning and experimenting with this new technology, I believe that new approaches, new creative ideas, innovative applications will emerge. So um, the... Uh, what I was going to say is that if anybody is interested in finding out more about what we do and uh, what um, what we are up to in my laboratory, um, the address is in red here in, in this slide. And um, we run masters and PhD programs. Um, um, and we welcome postgraduate students to join us to develop this exciting field of research, which is um, quantum computer music. Um, for more information on the stuff I've presented here, uh, there are um, these two papers here um, introduce a few um, things that we have done um, on, on the music front. And we are also looking into uh, more ambitious um, ways to control music, um, uh, such as um, using brain computer interfaces. And I believe that um, um, we've we've got here a first experiment on um, connecting um, uh, the brain with a computer to control to control music. So um, with this, I will uh, I will thank you for for um, um, listening, and I hope you found this exciting. Um, and yeah, so I'm open to um, conversation and answer questions um, if you wish to ask anything. Thank you so much, Eduardo. I, I have to say the uh, the quantum derived music was very well received uh, in general in the chat. Uh, people were quite surprised with how catchy it actually was. Um, yeah, I mean, there is the no the as a musician, you you know what the tricks of the trade are. I mean, um, um, when you program machines, when you program computers, you you also need to know how to map the results into decent. Um, outputs, um, you know, uh, the art of quantum computer music. I think it's not only um, generating little bits of notes and uh, you know and and some toy problems. I think we have an opportunity here to to map these results into realistic, you know, real world problems. Um, in this case, I, I've done this little tune last week. You know, this this program. If I spend a little bit more time. Um, I would be able to produce uh, very um, professionally sounding music using very, very simple quantum algorithms. And I think this is what is exciting. That, that, that's really fantastic. So one of the questions actually references something similar, the you know, field of using AI and like current machine learning models for generating music is a pretty active field. Where do you think the differences with uh, the quantum computing approach will be? Maybe the differences, the synergies, and even the advantages. I think at the, at the moment, um, at the, I think there are two things here. Um, the um, as I, as far as I can I can see, uh, the advancement in quantum machine learning um, are not yet significant to make uh, a significant change in the way uh, in which deep learning is being used in, in music at, at the moment. 
Um, but I, I, I believe that w once the uh, major issues you've got in quantum machine learning are solved, when you can scale up you know, the, the, the solutions that you are developing to more realistic uh, problems, then I believe that there will be fantastic opportunities for exploring music. I'm thinking about remixing music on the, on the fly. So imagine that you have a huge database of, of music. And then instead of just um, retrieving them to listen, you could have um, a sophisticated system that would remix the music on the fly. So every time you, you activate the system, it will go through this database and will create new songs for you based on existing songs that are in this database. And this could be done on the fly if we have very fast algorithms that are able to, to learn the style of the music that are stored and also learn how to recombine the elements of, of the music. And I think that is the exciting bit. But on the other side, on a more near term um, you know, uh, uh, application, I think it is, the, um, it is the way of thinking that is important, I think, in, in quantum computing um, for, for creativity. Um, I believe that, you know, um, as there is a different paradigm for programming, there is going to be, or there is already a new paradigm for programming the way you generate music. And I believe results may be different. You may have different kinds of music that perhaps we never thought of before. Well, that, that's really interesting. Um, just out of curiosity, you know, I'm not very familiar with uh, this type of computational music research. What are the, the kind of main challenges, the big problems that remain to be solved in the field overall? Um, it is the main problem, I think, is um, the music that is composed with machine learning these days is not really original. You know, it is based on previous things that already exist. So, um, what, what the because the machine needs to learn from given examples from things that exist in the real world. So, um, inevitably, if you learn from existing music, it's going to be, or it is quite difficult for a machine to produce something that is really, really new. Um, what those machine learning algorithms produce are pastiches or copies or things in the style of. Um, what I'm really interested in is exploring algorithms, is exploring computers to create stuff that has not been created yet. And, and I think that is the, that is the challenge that uh, we, we face. Um, and perhaps the new frontier, which is you now um, quantum approaches, may uh, provide some new new directions in, uh, for 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 this um, kind of problem. Uh, the ch chat is really active. Lots of questions coming up as we're where we're chatting along. So uh, Dr. Perceptron has a has a few. One of them was uh, just curious if all the notes that you pulled were from the major scale, um, and if that's just the way you set it up. And uh, a follow-up on that would also be, uh, don't all musicians learn from existing uh, music? Isn't that kind of a natural way that music is generated? That, that's true, but there is a, for the last question, there, there is a, a leap. I think once, once you learn what is out there, once you learn your, your metier, then you are prepared to extrapolate and, and to go beyond that. And I think this is the thing that computers are not able to do yet. Now, true, truly creators are able to go beyond you know, the norm. And, and I think that is, um, that is the thing that I want to see computers doing. With respect to the musical scale there, I don't really remember what I did. Um, <laughs> I think it was a fairly random bits of notes I put there. Let me have a look. Uh, the, 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 these are the notes. These are the notes, uh, if you can see on the slide. Um, it is, tum, 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 tum. Ah, it is a whole uh, tone scale. So that, that is no, there, there are no semitones, I think. That, that was it. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, also a quick follow-up question. So this is, uh, you know, I guess the idea of generating compositions, but it's, yeah. Are there any thoughts you've had around using quantum computers for actual audio generation, so using them as synthesizers? 
yeah yeah that that is um that is something that I'm very, very interested in doing. Um, um, the main problem, I think, is that um, um, in order to manipulate samples you know, at the audio level, um, you need a lot of qubits um, to do it you know, uh, properly. Um, one thing that can be done is more or less what I've done here. But instead of generating musical notes, you generate, let's say, frequencies for, for oscillators. Let's say if you have a bank of oscillators for, a, for an, a sort of an additive synthesizer, then instead of generating notes, you actually generate the frequencies and the amplitudes for these oscillators. And then you begin to produce timbres and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's another level of complexity. It's going down, you know, in one abstract level of representation, but more or less the same algorithms that we've been using for generative music um, are suitable for for synthesis of sound. So in this case, you would be playing, you know, you'd be using the quantum computer as a musical instrument, rather than as a, a generator of musical phrases and and, and so on. Yeah, th th there are any people uh, asking questions about the ability to entangle two musical instruments together. And I guess you'd be getting closer to the ability to do that if you could network two quantum computers and use each one as a synthesizer. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that would that is that's a natural thing to do. I mean, uh, we, you know, we, I'm just waiting for the hardware to be available to do this kind of things. I mean, uh, um, of course, we can do in simulation. It's, it's not as fun, but um, yeah. W once we've got the uh, the actual qubits out there that we can entangle and then explore the real entanglement of these uh, these systems, that would be an amazing thing. Imagine you have two instruments entangled, and then um, you you don't know how they they will sound like you know until. Um, until you measure or something, you know, maybe playing the instrument is measuring. Every time you play a note, you you are measuring the instrument, and these measurements will produce you no know, specific you no know, waveforms or a specific spectra, etc. So, I think the, the sky is the limit here, and and I can see that the uh, the, the audience out there, you know, is 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 uh, ideas are boiling. You know, there are many ideas already. And this is what I mean by quantum thinking, you know, shaping the way in which you know, the music technology may, may go from, from, from here on. So, so probably one of the earliest and biggest questions is, have you coined a genre for this type of music yet? No. <laughs> no, I don't know. what. Uh, again, um, because things are very simple at the moment, you know, the, the, um, this this kind of little tune I made just now is a kind of a lounge sort of music, you know. It's, it's not um, it, it's not nothing particularly very interesting, I would say. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to a day where I can say, right, you know, perhaps in the future we can say, well, this this music here can only be generated in the quantum domain. There is no way to make it classically. So when we achieve this, then I, I would be in a position to, to tell you guys, well, here is the quantum advantage for music. But until we get to that stage, I think um, we will be kind of uh, you know, um, groping in the dark and, and looking for, for ways in which we may achieve this. Well, that's really interesting. Um, still, still lots of questions coming up. Uh, I mean, again, getting crazier and crazier ideas of entangling whole orchestras. Uh, together. But maybe I wanted to shift a little bit more towards your, your past experiences. This is not the first time uh, working with a physical system, uh, the, the basic, you know, uh, laws of nature in order to generate music. You had an interesting collaboration with CERN in the past. Could you just maybe comment on that? Yes, it's, um, well, um, I've been commissioned um, a couple of years ago to, to write an opera. Um, and um, the uh, the the opera was going to be about new worlds or worlds that the, you know do not exist yet, and um, I teamed up with the um, the language creator that created the um, 
the Dothraki language for Game of Thrones. So he, he created a completely new language for this opera. And um, we, uh, you know, in the libretto, the story, everything is, is told in this language. And then I thought, well, how can I do more or less the equivalent for, for the musical part of the opera? Can I, can I devise some way in which the music could at least metaphorically um, represent uh, a world that does not exist or a world that is beginning to come into existence? Um, I came across with the, uh, the research that's developed at CERN, which is the, you know, with the, uh, um, the Hydron Super Collider, where they collide particles and these collisions then um, um, allegedly represent the birth of the universe, represent the, the Big Bang. Um, then I, I had this idea, perhaps what I could do is to, you know, to get uh, data from these particle collisions it transformed this data into, into musical elements, into musical notes, musical rhythms, um, musical thumbers. And so that's what I did. I've, um, I've got um, loads of uh, collision data and I studied them. I tried to understand what are the kinds of sensors that detected such and such particles and so on. And I orchestrated all this into a, into a um, an orchestra, an electronic orchestra, and a choir, and singers, and, and, and it was a fantastic experience. So the um, the opera is called Lampedusa. Um, it, the story takes place in an island. Um, if you know um, uh, Shakespeare, the, the Tempest, um, there is this island that uh, you know Prospero and Miranda arrives and and. Uh, um, and then they encounter a completely uh, different world there with uh, Caliban, uh, Sikorax, the, the witch. So this opera takes place before, before the Tempest, before Shakespeare Tempest, so before Prospero and Miranda arrived. So we wonder what happened on this island before the Shakespeare play. So there were there, there are ghosts, there are, um, um, you know, uh, um, beings that communicate only through music and they speak this uh, strange language that David uh, created. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a completely out of this world uh, story. Um, and it was, uh, the opera was premiered uh, last year by the BBC Singers. And um, um, a recording is available in, um, in SoundCloud if you type uh, Lampedusa, uh, SoundCloud, um, um, you should probably uh, come across it. That, that's oh. really interesting. I, I'd like to commission an opera where it's based on quantum computing music uh, that also describes and teaches people how a quantum computer works. Yeah, I think that is, um, I'm kind of cooking this, you know. Uh, just um, let me have the um, better tools to make things that are really uh, substantial. I mean, at the moment, you know, this research is, is, is we just begun working on this. Now it's, our research group is less than a, a year old. But when the tools become more sophisticated, when I feel that the, the materials are at a professional level, then I think um, we can probably think about, you know, um, an opera maybe taking place in a photonic uh, world or something, you know, <laughs> um, it's, it could be quite interesting. But yeah, that, that it will come uh, when, when the time is right. Uh, we have a couple more questions coming in. One of them is to repeat the, uh, the search. So what we'll actually do is we'll link the YouTube uh, and the SoundCloud uh, links to that uh, opera. Right. The, the opera is called Lampedusa. Yeah, we'll put it in the chat. Um, and then the other one was, in, in your opinion, is, is there a specific uh, feature of, of music, whether it be sound, tone, characteristic, that, that will really be uh, the differentiating thing between uh, quantum and classical music? No, I, I don't really know. Um, this is, again, it's something that... Um, if, if you position yourself, let's say, 70 years ago, before um, digital um, computers, you know, before digital music existed, 
So the kinds of music that we have today did not exist. Now, electronica did not exist. Uh, the uh, um, you know the, all the uh, the kinds of um, um, real time uh, programming, uh, live coding, all these styles did not exist before the digital digital computers. But nevertheless, people seventy years ago did not predict any of this. So I think we are in more or less in a, in a similar situation now. We have this huge potential in front of us, but we, we cannot predict what's going to happen. Um, but um, I don't know. I mean, combine this with uh, maybe quantum internet, uh, you know, the possibility of very fast communication through the globe. So we, we may be making music with uh, people distributed all, all over the globe, all at the same time. Um, accessing data and information that are unimaginable uh, today and uh, combining uh, navigating through spaces that we we cannot even imagine today i think um, this is what you know uh, what is waiting for us uh, 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 in the near future and there are other things as well i mean the uh, the, the research that we are starting to develop which is uh, connecting brain you know uh, the brain uh, uh, brain computer interfaces to to control quantum computers i think this will also lead to um, things that we cannot even think of uh, about you know nowadays now how will we be interacting with these machines how will you be the experience with music in the future we may not even perhaps use your ears anymore we may have things straight connected to our brains stimulating our our, our cortex so um, these these are things that we can dream on at the moment, and uh, slowly as we advance in our research, we can you know achieve you know step by step this this future. This is this is really fantastic research. I think a lot of people are very excited about it. Um, okay. So our our own uh, little tune that we have for Q Hack was written by our own Paul Finley, Doctor Perceptron. He was hosting this morning. Um, so maybe if I can make a request for you to play that uh, that piece one more time, and we'll yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Just go. Um, just need to. Perfect. And uh, we'll put it to a head-to-head -head challenge of uh, this quantum yeah, yeah. music versus Paul's the uh, okay. uh, tune to what should be the Q hack theme moving forward. Okay, let's do that. So it's it will take a couple of minutes and then you begin to listen to it. So I'm not sure if uh, if some of the moderators want to get a poll uh, going on on our chat, but we'll let the audience decide about. Uh, okay. <laughs> change the QPAC theme uh, to one derived uh, based on your work. Okay, or or maybe what we could do the next QRAC, we can generate a quantum computer generating music for it. So I, I, I love it. Uh, a new piece every session. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dr. Perceptron uh, is claiming that this is an unfair contest. So <laughs> uh, once again, Eduardo, while we're finishing this up, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for your wonderful talk. Uh, and your wonderful I, I, hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope to... Uh, Thank <laughs> you.